Hello, Solar Loon here, and here's another Gear in Devlog video. Um, this one, well, in this one I did, wait, hold on, hold on. In this one I did a few things. Um, yeah, I, I made some changes, so I just wanted to uh, kind of show it in this Devlog, even though I'm not completely finished. Um, I have a little GUI up here, I'm not sure if I put that in the last Devlog, um, but it's working okay. Um, I put a little outline around the cursor so that you can see it when it's um, in you know dark and light areas you can always see the cursor so that's nice um, functionally I haven't really changed anything not too many things uh, of that nature but um, a lot of good stuff in terms of shaders and things like that I need to fix this area <laughs> but anyway um, so yeah the main thing that I fixed and changed was the bloom filter um, the way it was was that it was always blooming everything but I added a threshold to the filter so that it would basically bloom only areas that are bright. Um, I used to use a luminance function to kind of get the luminance of the different colors and uh, correlate that to a, a, a brightness uh, value. It would work okay, but the problem with that is like certain colors wouldn't really be as bright as others. Like for example, bright red wouldn't affect the bloom, wouldn't trigger the bloom. Um, and you know, it dep I guess it's, uh, maybe I got my function from a or a formula from a different, uh, a wrong place. It was just kind of like, cr uh, kind of clamping down certain colors and and ra uh, raising others, and returning the dot product of that using a vector. It was <laughs> I'm not sure what it did exactly, but yeah, it didn't work um, quite the way I, as I wanted. So um, now I'm just basically getting the maximum color between the three channels and going with that. So um, bright colors will make the bloom. Uh, trigger like this bright red enemy and dark colors won't so you see that I get dark there's no bloom around the, the character and then when he's in the light he has a nice little sh um, shine around him it looks pretty good I think um, really gives the feeling of being outside so you see these bolts outside here um, they're shiny over here they get dark so it's a nice uh, effect I think I think it works pretty well um, yeah and it, the good thing is uh, also you know I can control a little better and, and you know handle which um, what the threshold is so for example this tree is nice and and pretty much standard to the way I, I drew it which makes it a lot easier to um, you know draw things and not have them stand out and be annoying to look at um, so I think it looks pretty good overall um, other than that I added a pause menu so you press pause and it'll blur the screen and uh, also apply a little green effect <laughs> um, green color um, Overall, I can't tell if this is going to come out well in the video because I'm recording the video at like a smaller resolution than 720p and I'm going to upscale it later, so I'm not sure how it really looks. It looks... I guess it'll be okay, I'm not sure. Um, so anyway, it looks a little better when it's, you know, full screen on, on your on your game or on your computer. Um, I re-changed or remade the door system to work so that it would take different scenes as transports previously the door would itself move the player and the camera now I basically push a little dictionary that says where it's supposed to go um, what scene is supposed to go to and what other door code um, the door has so for example this door has a code of two and then the um, door I guess this is going to go to another scene oh no this is go going to the same scene that's that door has a code of two of uh, one and this uh, door has a code of one so I can Basically, you just look through the scene, find the other door that has a co code of one, and then move it over there. And this works well because between scenes, obviously, I don't know which object is going to be the trigger or the other object. Uh, you know, the references between scenes are freed and, and created at, at the game's, you know, discretion. So I, it's not like I can say, okay, tie this door to the door in the other scene. No, because the, the door in the other scene basically doesn't exist. Um, I guess I could say, you know, give it a specific name or something like that, but I just chose this code system because it's pretty simple. This door has a code of one, and this door has a code of one, so it's easy for the for, to just look through the scene, find the other door with the other code, and then just move it there. Um, I added an event system, so this is the first NPC you're going to find. Um, he has a little kind of, you know, beep, beep, beep voice <laughs> kind of thing. Um, I'll go through the event system and the dialogue system in subsequent videos, I think, to this, so they'll be coming kind of stacked. Yeah, 
yeah, I'm pretty sure this is going, this is, this isn't going to turn out well, um, visually. Um, because it's just, it feels like it's, it's not as high fidelity as I really, really would like it. But anyway, it's working okay. And so that's, that's the, that pause was it loading up another scene. So the scene loading is pretty, um, low, low impact so far. Hopefully it'll stay around that amount of time, you know, just a couple of seconds. Um, not too, too long to jump between scenes. And, you know, jumping back and forth, um, actually happens really quickly. It seems like once Blender has the information in memory, it's pretty much instant. I have a song made for the village, but I forgot to actually put it in before I started recording. So I'm not going to stop the recording. I'm just going to save that for next time. Um, this is another guy. And you can hear his voice is higher pitch because he's a smaller robot. So I just made, um, that kind of ability to change the, the pitch of the voice. And you'll notice the area is uh, has a different name as well. So just little things like that I've been working on. Nothing really like spectacular um, or impressive visually too much, but just mostly underlying stuff that I kind of had to get done to get the game really working well. Um, the filters, the bloom filter and this blur filter are both in a separate scene, which um, works really well. I, I like that approach. Um, it's basically just a camera looking at nothing in a blank scene, and the camera's running a code to to run a, a 2D filter. Um, that scene with the effects are above the scene, the game scene. So it blurs the game scene, you know, well, it blurs the effects scene, which is nothing, and then everything below it, which is the game scene. And then the GUI is on top of that scene. So it works really well. Um, there's, a, there's a patch in the Blender tracker, I think, to actually allow you to move scenes around. I would really love to have that ability. It feels like it would be really useful. Um, in this kind of scene-based approach to layering and, and filters and, and shaders and stuff. Um, hopefully it'll get reviewed and, and merged in soon, or the buzz will get fixed if there's, I guess there's problems with the patch or whatever. Hopefully those things will get fixed and uh, it'd be committed, because it seems like having more control over the scenes would really be a nice feature. Currently I'm just adding them, you know, like adding the effects and then adding the GUI. It'd be nice to be able to move them around as I ne need to. But anyway, anyway, that's basically all I've been working on. Um, just kind of, like I said, basic stuff. Uh, this little sky background thing is scrolling and you can see it's like got a little seam, like somewhere around here, but it's supposed to be kind of like a, like a screen. It's not an actual window, which is why, um, you know, it's kind of got this border around it. I'm not sure if it really looks correct, but I kind of like that seam, that cut to give that feel like it's not a correct, um, you know, it's not an actual cloud layer and stuff out there. You know, um, anyway, so yeah, that's just some minor stuff I've been working on, and hopefully I'll be able to make more things and, uh, continue development on this and, yeah, really flesh it out further, because, um, I want to really get it done. Alright, well, thank you, thanks very much for watching, I've been SolarLoon, and this has been a Gear Devlog video. Thanks, once again, see ya, and have fun.